This is the Church of St. Paul in the Desert. At the end of the Second World War, my father was serving in Moscow in the American Embassy, had learned Russian in order to do that, got to do that because he happened to recite a poem in Polish and they thought he spoke Russian. Back then that was, you know, anyway. He brought back from Russia two things that I have treasured, and one of them actually hangs in my bedroom, and it is a Russian icon. And it is, in fact, Elizabeth and Mary greeting each other, which is part of why I cherish it so much. It is one of those stories that we, we hear about, but we don't dwell on. And in fact, the story of Mary and the Annunciation, which is this morning's gospel, is bracketed by the story of Elizabeth. In her old age, barren, conceives a child, John, Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist. But I mention that because of the importance of Mary. So often for us, particularly in the Protestant side of our faith, I say that a little bit sheepishly, we've kind of, we've tended to push Mary to the outside and been less than gracious to our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters who have held Mary in some esteem. But what's important for me is to remember that Mary is important. It is important for us to remember and respect this woman whom God chose to be the God-bearer. And how often it is, we seem to have an image of Mary as this kind of meek and mild, or, okay, I'm a puppet on a string, I'll do whatever you want me to do. But that really is not Mary. Mary, in our story today, is human. And it's somewhat difficult for us to grasp fully her incredulity at this exchange with the angel Gabriel. How can this be? How can this be that I'm going to be a God-bearer? that I will give forth the Son of God because I am a virgin. Even more within our society today, and not not any more at some levels, than in early first century Palestine. Pregnant, teenager, female, all of those things strikes against her. No, no human being, no, no personhood, no value given. Female, teenager, what do we do with female teenagers today? Push aside, discount, what do they know? A lot more than we did when we were teenagers. But Mary, here is this young woman, betrothed, engaged to Joseph, the way it was done, arranged, she may or may not have had any say in the process, but what were her feelings when first of all Gabriel says, you have found favor with God? What does that mean? And how incredible that God would find favor with any one of us. And yet it is what God says to us over and over again. You are my people, and I love you. But here is this youngster, teenager, A she, no value, that God has come to you 
and told you that you will bear God's son. Perplexed? Minimally. Try beyond comprehension. How could any one of us, how could any one of us have any sense of reality if God were to come to us and we were told that we would be the God-bearer, that the Holy Spirit would come upon you? It's beyond my ability to comprehend. And perplexed is about this much. Try horror, fear, beyond comprehension. Fearful, in terms of what we do to pregnant teenagers, unwed teenagers today, first century Palestine was probably not particularly gracious. But here she is. And she comes to us, first with the question of how can this be? And then in several verses, let it be to me according to your will, to your word. How do we move that quickly? From a place of total ambiguity, total disbelief, to a place of obedience, to a place of acceptance. Here Mary moves, moves very quickly. Moves from peasant girl to prophet, from Mary the Virgin, to the Mother of God, from, if you will, from denial to discipleship, an invitation, an invitation throughout that we prepare a place Samuel, Samuel, and they build a house for the king, and then Nathan says, well, what about God? We've kept God in a tavern, in a tent, and an ark, and moved him around. We should build a temple for him. And God, at some level, says with tongue-in-cheek, that would be nice, but am I too good to be among the people? The invitation for us during Advent has been consistently that we prepare a place within. Not a temple, just a place within to receive the Son of God. How has our preparation worked? Have we become befuddled by all the Anxiety that seems to pervade this season of Advent in the secular world? Have I gotten everybody's present? Have I got and we go through the list and we become frustrated. And yet the invitation comes again and again to be ready, to prepare a place. Mary's story is ultimately our story. And she moves herself as she moves each and every one of us from who we think we are to what God has called us to be. The transition time again happens between expectation and the coming of Christ at Christmas. And Mary shows us that transition, that transformation 
to which each and every one of us is invited to move from who we are to whom God has called us to be. An essential journey for each and every one of us, but one that seems at times monumental, had to have been monumental for Mary. And yet, she was open to that possibility. And so it is that we are also invited to make that transformation, to be who God has called us to be, to move from an observant believer to a confessing apostle. Mary has prepared a place, and so we still have time to prepare that place within for us and to be the ones who also proclaim that incredible hymn of praise to the glory of God, the Song of Mary, about freedom and righteousness and God's plan for all of creation. Amen.